the other people in VC, it's Andy a Cloudy a Milder. And this is my introduction to modern Iron Maiden, my old farts guide to modern Maiden. Um, Iron Maiden, one of my favourite bands of all time, there's no denying that, and it's no secret if you're a regular watcher of this channel. One thing I've noticed, though, watching other people's videos when they're talking about Iron Maiden or they're doing ranking videos is that a lot of people don't really know or don't appreciate the, say, the last five out, five albums of Iron Maiden in the year 2000s when Bruce Dickinson rejoined and they became a six-piece. Um, just about everybody is familiar with the first seven albums, self-titled Killers, Number of the Beast, Peace of Mind, Power Slave, Somewhere in Time, and uh, Seventh Son of a Seventh Son. Um, you won't find many Maiden fans that don't think this is the classic era. And it is, I'm not here to debate that. You'll get some people that go a little bit beyond that, and they'll maybe, uh, they went as far as No Prayer for the Dying or uh, The Fear of the Dark. But then Bruce Dickinson left, Adrian Smith had left already before No Fear of the Dark. Um, People lost their way with Iron Maiden. Uh, Iron Maiden lost their way uh, as well a little bit. They went on with Blaze Bailey. And um, whereas it kept Maiden alive and Maiden wouldn't be still the band they are today and still going today if it wasn't for, you know, the, the 90s sh struggle and, and keeping going with, with Blaze Bailey at, uh, at, the, at the helm and the vocals. So I think we've got a lot to be thankful. And while those aren't bad albums at all, I for one was... Uh, pleased when I eventually heard that uh, they'd kind of got the original, original, uh, the classic lineup back together, uh, even though they would then became a, a six piece, obviously. So I say, yeah, I often hear people say they don't really know um, modern era album. They gave up after Seventh Son or they gave up after No Fear for the Dying. So what I'm attempting to do here is to, well, I picked, I picked 11 songs um, that I think 80s Iron Maiden fans will uh, be able to click with and possibly go on and appreciate the 21st century Maiden albums um, a lot more uh, and maybe even enjoy them. Uh, 11 songs. Why 11 songs? Well, uh, I went through and ranked all of my favourite songs from albums a while back in, in a different video. And the 11 that I picked out, and I wanted a good representation from the last five albums. Um, those 11 songs came to just under 80 minutes, and that fitted quite nicely on a mini disc. Remember these guys? Well, <laughs> I've had my uh, mini disc player up here for a long, long time. I've been meaning to have a play around and make the odd uh, mix tape disc or two, and this seemed a good reason to do it and uh, I had a fantastic time uh, putting this together. So the 11 songs I've come up with, I want to go through them one by one and just give you a quick uh, summary of why I chose the song. As with any good mixtape, they are in a specific order. I think this order works so you're not getting too much of one album or the other. There's generally two songs from each of the five albums and three obviously from one of them that makes up the 11. Now these aren't necessarily my favourite um, 11 songs from the 21st century, but um, they are 11 songs I think really give a good example of how good Maiden have been in the year 2000. The songs that I think 80s Maiden fans will really click with, but I want you guys to be the judge of that. So um, like it or loathe it. Um, Leave me a comment below when you've you've gone through these. Um, if you are a big um, modern Maiden fan, uh, as I am, then you know let me know maybe what you would have picked as alternative numbers, or um, if you. Um, so with, with this with this um, playlist uh, disc, um, I've made a virtual copy of this disc as a as a playlist, and uh, there'll be a link above and, and below. Uh, if you are pretty unfamiliar with 20th Century Maiden, 
21st century maiden stuff then uh i hope you'll have a listen to those songs and then again comment below and tell me whether you think uh you could be a convert or whether i'm um uh talking through my ass basically um so people are often critical of the length of the songs of maiden these days but i think the longer songs allow for kind of more self-indulgent guitar solos and i really like that when it comes to why made they've got three fantastic lead guitarists um you want to give them all a fair whack a fair uh, share of all the songs and, and that's fine with me because i can listen to these guys all day um i'm not trying to say these songs are any better than the 80s era uh made at all the classic era maybe at all um i don't think you can actually really compare them it's almost um you know they they, they can both they both exist i don't think you have to compare them uh and you can enjoy them both in parallel i listen to a lot of modern maiden stuff now uh just because i know the 80s stuff so well i perhaps don't listen to that as much um so let's let's dive straight in so the first song uh, that i've picked is actually off the newest album well this is 2015 this is uh, book of souls and the song i've chosen is death or glory um it's an absolute barnstormer of a of a track uh, i compare it to uh, other high adrenaline classics like aces high it's really punchy and fast and to the point and it is one of the i think one of the songs to connect with on here for uh classic maiden fans um this album so this is the hard book whenever people say hard book you notice they always tap on camera. This is the hard book edition. Um, the CD version is two CDs, and it's a really long album. I get why people don't um, haven't connected with this one. It's over 90 minutes of music. But Empire of the Clouds, the, the last song, it's not a bad song, but it's not an Iron Maiden song by any means, and it's 18 minutes. So if you skip that song, it's only a 70-ish minute album, which isn't which is still long, but it's not as bad as a 90-minute album. And honestly, the best way to absorb this album is um, on the vinyl version. It comes on three discs, and but the time it takes to listen to one or two songs are on the side, flip it over. Uh, I'm critical of some albums that are, are put on multiple discs because you do that, but because these songs are pretty long, um, I think it just breaks up that listening experience. You're not, you're not listening to two 50-minute or 45, 50-minute CDs. Um, and it's just a lot easier to connect with and absorb the songs that are on there because you do get that little break. Uh, anyway, the second song. So once we've had Death or Glory and the, the, the power punch that is that, we're going to go into uh, A Brave New World. And um, the song I've picked from here is Dream of Mirrors. And I think it's a bridge between Classic Maiden and the progressive Maiden uh, sound that they would go on. And, um, and build upon on the albums to come after this one. Uh, and this clock's in at you know, nine plus minutes. It reminds me a little bit of Somewhere in Time era of Maiden in the sound, um, but a lot more modern sound, a lot more polished, I think better produced. It's a slow blue, slow blue, slow a burner. It gradually gains momentum and builds up to a bit of a heavy metal monster before calming down again and building again. And, and that's a pattern that a lot of uh, the modern uh, 21st century Maiden songs do. They, they're they long and they build up, they build up to a crescendo and then they take you back down and they build you up again. And uh, I really like that style. It's really good. Uh, song number three comes from uh, A Matter of a Life and Death. This is a really important album to me. I was kind of in a little bit of a musical wasteland. Um, and uh, I've still got the, the, the price sticker on here because I was living in Nottingham in England and I walked past FOP, which was a, a record shop that we had there. And it was kind of also had cheap CDs, cheap books, cheap media. And I saw this in the window and I hadn't heard any Maiden for a long time. So it was this 2006, hadn't heard any, any Maiden or much metal uh, for, for a long, long time. I saw it and I thought, I wonder what Iron Maiden sound like these days. And I kind of fully expected it to be the old school stuff, but I'm maybe a bit tired and just churning out you know, the same old shite again. But um, it blew me away when I heard this, and I started going back and listening to a lot of my old metal stuff and discovering new metal stuff uh, as well. Um, 
so yes, A Matter of Life and Death is a really important album for me in my musical evolutionary tastes. But the song that I have picked from here, um, probably a bit of a deeper cut, is the, is the Longest Day. Uh, it's about war. War is grim. But this song is absolutely epic. Again, the atmosphere builds slowly through the verses. It kind of, it's got this, this kind of this pre-chorus, I guess, and it kind of builds up again to a crescendo. And then the chorus actually takes it down a little bit again. And then we come into the solos. And the solos are the best part of this song. I absolutely love it. It's uh, really, really cool stuff. So my song number four, number three, sorry, is The Longest Day on A Matter of Life and Death. Uh, song number four, we're going to go over to Dance of Death, everybody's worst favourite uh, Iron Maiden cover. Um, I have a love-hate relationship to this album. I think it has some absolutely fantastic songs on it, but it also has that um, uh, folky, ditty-type edge to, to a few of the songs that I really, really do not connect with at all and don't like. But the song I've picked off here is an absolute uh, classic. It's uh, Passchendaele. Um, tell the tale of Passchendaele. Again, another slow burner, um, but no one tells a historic story like Iron Maiden, and this one is an absolute belter. Um, it takes, it's about just under five minutes before the solos kick in, but when they do, again, classic, classic Iron Maiden um, solos. Number five, we're going to go back to A Brave New World. Uh, CD this time, and we're going to go with Out of the uh, Silent uh, Planet. Um, this is one that is more traditional Maiden. It's superb galloping uh, track. Not necessarily classic Maiden, but it's a top mark song for me. Absolutely fantastic. Really feel good song, catchy chorus, and you'll be singing along to the chorus after just one listen. I guarantee it. Uh, song number six. We're going to go back to the Book of Songs. Um, as I mentioned, a lot easier to consume this album on uh, on vinyl. Just cut out that one, and uh, and we're all good. As I mentioned earlier. So what we're going to go for the second song of this one is uh, uh, Shadows of the Valley. It actually comes next to uh, Death or Glory on the original album, but um, it's another song that has a kind of a somewhere in time vibe at the start. Um, it even references uh, Sea of Madness in, in the lyrics, uh, but that's where the comparison is. Uh, this is an epic Maiden song. It's kind of mid-paced, but it doesn't let up all the way through. Consistent, consistent, consistent. Uh, great song, uh, Shadows of the Valley. Number seven, first song from the uh, final frontier that you're going to see tonight, and that is The Alchemist. Um, the best way to consume this album is, and it took me, honestly, it took me a long time. I, I bought this album, and I tried, and I tried, and tried, and I couldn't get in it, but I skipped um, Satellite 15, um, The Final Frontier, that first track, or certainly the... Um, the dull, boring, oh, droney instrumental bit that starts with. I skipped that, went straight into the final frontier, and the album flowed, and I really enjoyed it. I wasn't pissed off, basically, and I wasn't bored before the real songs began. So that's my tip. Skip the intro part to Satellite 15, uh, get into the final frontier, and listen to the album. But The Alchemist is the song I've chosen on here. Um, to me, that's a modern Maiden classic. It's epic, it's upbeat, it's fast, and I think it has a bit of a, uh, a Power Slave uh, vibe to it. So, um, The Alchemist, track seven, on the playlist, not on the other. Um, we're actually going to go back to Brave New World again. So this is the album I've picked uh, three from. Again, not necessarily it's my favourite um, Maiden album of the modern era, just... Uh, a track that I think um, 80s Maiden fans will be able to connect with. And that's uh, Fall Angel, Fallen Angel. Um, it's it's a short, sharp song on this album compared to a lot of the longer Maiden songs that are out there. I think it's got a touch of the peace of mind about it as well. It's stripped that Maiden full of classic Maiden riffs and solos and a really, really good song worth checking out. Uh, 
So it's uh, it's track one of the uh, uh, the second uh, album. Okay, we have them back to full glory, um, and track uh, eight on my playlist. Track nine on my playlist is another kind of deep cut. Um, again, not one of my favourite songs from the album, but um, it's good enough for me to go put, to put on this uh, mixtape, this introduction tape for you. Um, this is the second longest song in the, um, the set list that I've got for you here. It's a really powerful song. It's almost orchestra orchestral in places. Um, it has lots of place changes, building atmosphere. Perhaps it's not a go-to song for fans of this album, but I think it's a great deep cut. And I don't think I mentioned the name of the song that I, it's uh, For the Greater Good of God. And it's uh, you know, nine plus uh, minutes. But to me, that is a song that is kind of classic, new classic, modern Iron Maiden, and uh, one that I would recommend all Maiden fans have a listen to. Track number 10, going back for our second track of uh, Dance of Death, and we're going with New Frontier this time. Um, after the long song that was um, For the Greater Good of God, um, thrown in another classic galloper uh punchy and uplifting and um a, a classic maiden song in my eyes so that brings us on to the final um song and it's the longest track of the 11 it clocks in at over 10 minutes but if you're going to accept and you're going to get into 21st century maiden then you've got to be prepared to accept that it can be, the songs can be a marathon more than a, a, a sprint. Um, my device is going crazy. Uh, you embraced the rhyme of the Ancient Mariner without question in 1985 on Power Slave. So I encourage you to dive into um, when the wild wind blows and embrace it and most importantly, enjoy it. Um, it's it's a, just an absolutely fantastic song. Um, I think I first heard that song on uh, in vivo. On, I saw the DVD Blu-ray and I thought, yeah, I've got to get I've got to get into that. Um, that is great stuff. So that's my eleven tracks. So obviously this is just my opinion. Um, if you've already embraced the post two thousand Iron Maiden, then let me know what songs you would have picked. Uh, let me know which of these you do like or you you absolutely don't like um if you haven't invested any time like i say have a listen to the playlist that i've put together with these songs uh that i've put on my own uh little compilation uh disc um good or bad you're not going to convince me not to like these songs or modern air maiden but i'd love to hear what your opinions are of the band now and um whether i could go some way to to change your mind or not who knows it's up to you Thanks for watching. Catch you again soon. Bye.